the place. Can you believe my batteries died? Can I see all the other started. elements of a, of a service plan in place? So that's what we'll be work, walking through a process for. Uh, the public meetings that were referenced uh, this month and, and into next are really focused on all of those issues. So we're looking forward to hearing from our community. Yeah, I'm I'd sure also you are. note <laughs> that uh, as like part it. of the uh, division transit plans. Um, adoption, we committed to reinvest all the service hours of the number four on the east side uh, from uh, Gresham into downtown Portland into local north-south service. Um, so whether or not we can advance that in, in a, ahead of the project uh, with additional resources um, will, will be one of the topics for conversation as we get into the both next budget year, but also more importantly, I think the plan for the allocation of HB 2017 resources. And again, just generally, we've identified three general uh, areas of investment. One is, of course, the low income fare program, which uh, we've committed to. The That's 12 would million. Be the kinds of services. They're getting 100 million a year. Level services that are really important uh, that have been mentioned here. But then we also have the need to deal with some of the really congested corridors in the region and begin to offer oh, uh, really stronger service in some of those areas. So what? I think across the board, we'll see some really dramatic and really positive increases in bus service. Um, but I also just note there's going to need to be a little patience as we grow the system because what we're talking about over the next seven to eight years is probably <laughs> increase of service by about a third overall. Um, and um, that's probably a little bit of a conservative number, but we'll be working through all of those allocations and, and shared uh, and, and logistics with our advisory committees and, of course, with you, um, and we'll be sharing some of that at the various rounds of public meetings that will be coming up. So lots of opportunity, um, and, um, again, I think it's a really exciting time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I did want to just mention the, the topic of the bond measure uh, that, that did come up, and I, I would continue to note that we're working with our uh, partners uh, and each of the county coordinating committees as well as the city of Portland, uh, so four different entities to see if there are a series of projects that make sense to um, uh, bring together to the voters. Uh, but I, I would just re continue to reiterate um, what – uh, Mr. President, your, your comments were, which is that it's not only uh, what it would be, but if, uh, because there's also a very strategic decision about whether 2018 is the right time or whether it should be part of a broader regional en endeavor um, that would be time yeah. more more aimed at right now yeah, for 2020. They, oh, so yeah, they know they don't have the votes. So that's why. Really, uh, important for us. You know that's so what the real reason is. Term, they have to try to get public so opinion behind them. And that's, aiming at 2020. That's not right now. And, and really There's too many people to, like uh, me out there right now, and they've got to they got to give us some meat for us um, to support I would just that note, uh, related to Mr. Walker's comments, uh, uh, particularly on snow and ice, that was actually a comment that I wanted to make in my report, we have been updating our snow and ice plan. Patrick Pricer from our uh, where is Patrick Department Pricer? has been Let's leading that, that effort. Um, unfortunately, last year was a year that we had a lot to learn from. Uh, yeah, well, they say that every year, by the way. They went through um, the same thing in 2008. Like time, uh, the system was shut event. down for There's a week. something more to add. Yeah, but they never learned. Add to a um, tool chest related to responding yeah, right. to those situations. Um, very difficult for us, of course, but once I again, there's a lack of staffing. Taking is a real to problem. Take all the there. lessons learned and um, and coordinate those, frankly, with our jurisdictional partners, including the City of Portland and and ODOT and others uh, related to snow plowing and all of that. Um, I do know that those are circumstances where everybody is trying very hard to do their best, and that they're very trying circumstances in this region that is probably has a dearth of snow plows compared to hmm. what the needs were particularly last year. Um, he was talking about say that the station It's one of the nicest days uh, you could imagine this morning anyway. Um, it feels like we're being lulled into uh, the storm uh, here. Um, I would also just note related to the system capacity issues that Mr. Howell raised, um, and I think yes. as you know, we are doing some studies around the steel bridge that also include uh, the potential of a, of a uh, uh, subway, if you will, or an under-river crossing. There's also talk uh, of, uh, uh, of a subway as an alternative in uh, the city's transportation system plan. 
Um, so those conversations will continue, but we'll learn a lot over the next few months related to the steel bridge capacity issues. But I think even more importantly, the message I wanted to send is that it's not just downtown. Actually, if you look at the, the, the most constrained part of our system capacity right now, perhaps Gateway, uh, where we yeah, have the, yeah. the red line, the green line, and the blue line all coming together in all directions. And so um, I would just note to uh, Jim and, and others who are interested in this, we have a presentation during the briefing on the red line project, as we call it, which partially is intended to um, to uh, open up the additional capacity through that really important juncture and that really important site, um, amongst other uh, uh, outcomes that we would like to see for that project. So just would note that that's on the agenda. Um, any questions at this point? I can, yeah. How much did the city of Seattle oh. pass for their bond for transportation? Esmond. Oh. I know off the top um, of your, you don't know. So the program show. moving forward is about fifty billion dollars. Fifty but billion. That incorporated some previous approvals. So the initial, I'm looking at Bernie. Uh, Twenty-five billion, and they were regretting it in Seattle. Believe me, they got conned up there. Right. So it's about four Funny. years, Bernie. Yeah, forty yeah. years. Yeah, and that's about two times the size of Portland. Well, one Seattle. thing to be careful about is the regional economy there is more than two times Portland, so maybe three times. Okay, <laughs> thank it's you. One, Seattle is uh, one of the richest yeah, areas. So that's in, that's, in that's the an country. important, I think, neoliberal heaven. So they're going to have a lot more money. Although to they do, do have some what social Mr. Howe stuff there has too advocated, and I know I've advocated along with L's, but uh, to fix the bottlenecks? Um, yes. Um, and I, I it's sort of, um, I've had the reason to walk past, down memory lane perhaps a, a bit over the last week or so, and uh, recall that I was, um, I, I came to TriMet for the West Side Light Rail Project, you know, almost well, 27 years ago yeah, this 27 month. 27 years ago. Um, and uh, the first project was the tunnel through the West Hills. Mm -hmm. um, we have difficult geology in Portland related to tunneling. So it, I, I, I always caution people. It, they, it may be a very, a very important thing to think about for a future, but it will be uh, a very costly endeavor. There's simply no... no uh, if ands or buts about that, um, well, I don't. Did, I don't. The debate is going to not going to be costly, but you, then you you put in other f factors. I think we'd be ahead, or the agency would be ahead. No, if you no. had lots of money. No question. Well, they need uh, the t the tunnel more than they need the uh, um, so Tiger Light Rail. Let me just uh, note uh, again, looking at ridership. Um, you've seen over this year our ridership somewhere between two and a half and three percent down from the year before. That continues to be the trend in September. I would say that there are some bright spots in that horizon. One is Max ridership was actually up about eight tenths of a percent. Uh, so the decline was really in the bus system, uh, and primarily midday and weekend. Um, I'd also note that we saw a healthy increase in Orange Line ridership. Uh, if I remember We're still not meeting the original estimates, according to Elliot Ness. I just asked him about see. this yesterday. Continue so he's lying. <laughs> okay. Um, so just to note that, um, and I, I wanted to also just note again the, uh, and aim everyone at the public outreach efforts that we have underway. Uh, including our advisory committees and the public meetings and open houses that we'll be having over the next month, um, I think are really important. We've included some online surveys and ways for people, as Mr. Owens noted in his testimony, to offer us um, suggestions even if they're not able to um, come to the actual open houses. Um, I did want to... Um, I'll bring up uh, Kara Fitzpatrick, if I could, oh, um, is this to do Pastor? our um, quarterly financial report. Who? Just to note that our CFO uh, oh. D is not able to be with us today, but um, uh, we we have the first string, as you know, in terms of somebody who really knows our finances in, in Kara. So we're pleased to have her here today. Oh, somebody else. Uh, what is this? Let's see. 
I want to see Presser, a.k.a. Diaper Boy. Hi, good morning. Nice to get nice here. Fitzpatrick. I'm the Director of Financial Services at TriMet, and I'm going to give an update on our first quarter of FY18. Okay, let's see what she says. Our total revenue for the period ended 9-30-17 is under budget by 1.8 Under budget, not enough revenue. 1.5%. Eh, 1%. Our total operating expenses are under budget oh. by 7.8 million or 6.3%. 6.3% under budget operating and expenses. This next That's point huge. And the net results from operations are minute. actually 3.3 million for the quarter, and they are better than budget by 6.0 million. There's a edit to that. Okay, so now what are they going to do with that? Where's all that money going to go? Our payroll tax revenues grew by 8.4% compared to the last quarter at this time last year. Yeah, more money than ever. And passenger revenue is 2.3 million less than budget or 7.7%. .7 and noted as ticket revenue was down, there were two days of free fares in August due to a technology hiccup. And passenger revenue decreased 3.9% compared to the same period last year. Yeah, see how they see how they the passenger revenue is part of their whole Total expenses. They have to extract as expenses. much wealth as they can uh, out of people. Four point six percent under budget, or five point six million. Okay, and that's a lot, that man. Look at that, four point six under budget with point uh, three million in transportation work comp. related to our workers' compensation. And a couple notes on Repairs that and maintenance. is. Um, Repairs and ma We've been mainly do more judicious and litigation decisions and stronger claims management. Oh yeah, they and denied that they the <laughs> has okay. They're for a deputy general three hundred thousand dollars less claims for the work comp. There have been assholes about all that. With ultimately the helping the agency address workers' compensation litigation more efficiently and less expensively. Yeah, motherfucker. And in the maintenance division, uh, diesel fuel is down 0.2 million, primarily due to gas prices lower than budget. Onto our operating project expenses. Uh, um, overall, repairs and maintenance to existing infrastructure is our operating project expenses. What? And this area is 2.3 million. 62 percent under, under budget. budget. Primarily due to the timing of operating expenses, as we're only in the first quarter of the. Oh, year okay. That doesn't mean 18. anything. Then. Oh, that <laughs> is it short and sweet. <laughs> 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 are, are, there, are there any questions? All right. Well, who cares about their questions? But okay, then, okay, come on. This is a general manager report. I want to hear what he says. Um, if I might just continue with uh, with the report, I did just want to um, acknowledge that. I went, um, oh God damn it! I just cut to off. our uh, agency staff at a town hall meeting last Wednesday. Okay, here it comes. Here, our um, worship. Ready? Very um, set. Go. Um, well received by me, but it was very touching in terms of the response oh, from the staff and uh, people that I've certainly worked with all these years. Um, but I wanted to, the message that I left them with uh, was that the agency will be in good hands, theirs. We have an excellent staff uh, who really do know their jobs and do a great job every day, and it's been my honor to really work with them over these last 27 years. Take a step minute. I also yeah. note that it has been my honor to work with this board of directors um, yeah, and yeah. past board of directors. Um, this, I sometimes consider myself amongst the luckiest GMs in the, um, in the industry because of the uh, governance uh, structure of Primat, <laughs> where we yeah. have such dedicated good citizens. <laughs> the governance structure where you get everything you want without question. Yeah, I bet you like that, don't you, Neil? Thank you for your service and the opportunity I've worked for you for all these years. As you know, I will be kicking around uh, for the next five months, uh, and I, my guarantee to you is okay, I will so uh, continue to put the pedal to the metal because we have a lot to do. All these issues that have come up, HB 2017, some of the fleet issues, uh, maintenance issues, <laughs> lots of other um, pressing issues that we really do need to address as an agency and uh, again we'll continue to work uh, diligently toward all of those. Um, I would sometimes just if I might take the uh, leash to uh, leash to um, uh, share some comparisons because sometimes we get into the day-to-day -day grind of our work and the challenges and the problems that we undertake but 
when you add up over a long period of time where TriMet has been and where it is, uh, I think it, it's an impressive picture. Uh, when I started, this agency was somewhere in the realm of 55 billion annual rides a year. It's now uh, 25 or so years later uh, at 100 million rides a year, or very, very near that. Um, so we've gone from one light rail line to five, 60 miles of, of track, and we've added west of the family. We've got a model DBE program. We've got to focus on equity and inclusion. Uh, we have budding fair, uh, low income fare program. Um, in other words, we've made some tremendous project progress. I think. Uh, over yeah, the years I don't know about days. that. So you again, mm -hmm. I think it hasn't served the, the ridership. It hasn't served the employees. Been, certainly, uh, really have been the enemy. Uh, important and, and absolutely key uh, to making that progress over the past. And so again, it's been um, a pleasure to work with you. Run out of battery I'll again here. Working Jesus. with you between now and February. Um, and uh, and then I'll be out in the audience offering my comments with anybody else. Um, uh, so with that, Mr. Board President, okay. I'd be happy to answer. We'll skip all the adulation.